All right, welcome to Flaming Arrow 101. So, what we need are many things. We need our Trick Wick candles. So these are the blow it out and they relight candles. Uh, so fun at birthday parties and also fun for Flaming Arrows. So inside each of these is a magnesium laced wick. And the magnesium burns extremely hot, which you need because the arrow travels fast enough that if you fire it with anything on there on fire, it blows it out immediately and doesn't relight again. So it doesn't have that nice dramatic effect. So the magnesium arrow relights uh, over and over again and keeps it lit in flight and at the end. So we're going to take one of these. Best if they're frozen. So if you freeze them really hard so they're nice and frozen, then you can break them apart. I do this, I break it apart in three different places, give it a little wiggle, and then I use my thumbnail to make a little dividing line. This is like cooking, enjoy your own favorite recipe of separating wax. Have fun with it. Come up with a song or something. <laughs> and then you can see that there's a little bit of gray on the wick, as you can see on this lovely example here. If the wick is picked clean, you see it white, then you have a regular candle wick that won't do much. So you want to leave the magnesium on there. So there, see, is that the white part? We don't want that, we want the dark part. So you continue along this process, and whichever way you want, pull the wax off. Again, frozen makes this oh so much easier. All right, we're going to do a Julia Childs. Ta-da! All done. And now the other pieces you need. Uh, you need eight of these. You need a piece of cheesecloth, which comes in these nice little uh, bolts like this. And one fold is about what you want. So as you unfold one piece, it makes a nice little crease. And that's how much cheesecloth that you're going to use. So we have our piece here. We have our eight wicks. We have our three twist ties. You want these to be paper twist ties, not the plastic kind. The plastic kind uh, melt and they don't burn and they don't work as well. So these, you can get these at your fine local grocery store, uh, beg, borrow, or steal, and they're yours. All right, so next, the assembly. You have one long sheet like this, fold it in half, a little crease, grab your handy dandy scissors, and cut it in half. All right. Now, for the first one, you're going to fold it over about an inch. So you have this piece here is about an inch. So fold it back over, like so. Then we're going to take our arrow, and this is an XX75 Game Getter Aluminum Arrow made by Easton. You want these to be aluminum arrows because they take a really long time to melt through, which is important because the arrows need to burn for a little while. Maybe we'll see this later. The, uh, they're 32 inches long because this last chunk here, about that much, is going to be covered in cheesecloth and when you draw back, you don't want to be burning your hand. So the 32 inches is because the last four inches or so are on fire. <laughs> you take this last bit here and get your twist ties, one of your twist ties ready. And we'll get some of our four wicks. Now, eight wicks is what I use. I do an inner layer and an outer layer. So I'm going to take my cheesecloth and this thick part here is because later on when we dip it in kerosene you want this part to be the sponge and hold the kerosene fuel and this part here you want to be mostly dry it'll have a smattering of little sprinkling of kerosene but not be soaked again we're doing this because we don't want the arrow to be very heavy you could make a flaming arrow out of uh, flaming pine pitch or many other tree saps but it's very heavy and uh, you would need to fire at least a 70 pound bow. And we're shooting much less, so we want to have a light arrow. 
and this works fine as well. Also, if you put kerosene on the back part, it burns much too quickly. So I'm going to take this, and this one I want to write very tight. I don't want there to be a lot of air in here, because I want this inner wick to burn slowly. So I wrap that tight. Notice that you can see the tip just coming out the end there. Nice clean line there, nice and tight. And then I'm going to put this on my twist tie and one wick. So I'm going to put it there. And you want this twist tie to be one inch back. So right where we folded it over and it makes that thick part, you want this twist tie to be right behind that thick part that we made there, sitting on top of one of the wicks. I'm going to take my other three wicks, place them right here. One and two. So they're nice and level with the front. All right, hold that one up. And I'm going to take this twist tie and I'm going to tie it on so that it is tight. Now, I don't I want to put this on. Keep that tight. Spread my wicks out. Sometimes they bunch together, not a problem. Spread these out a bit. Okay, and then if you can get it wrapped around again, then go ahead and do that. So I'll wrap it around the back, and I will twist these together, and then fold the excess back over. All right, that's twist tie number one. That holds those four wicks in place, and also helps the kerosene when you dip this later not come back past this little arrow tourniquet back into this part. There we go. Next, you take your other piece of cheesecloth, and this one you don't fold. You leave it longer. And we're going to wrap this one as well, but we don't need to wrap this one so tight. This one we can keep loose. So we wrap that one. This is the show piece. So this is what burns and makes the nice ooh and ah of the flame. But what you are waiting for, put another one down there is for the arrow to burn long enough for the second set of wicks in here to catch and the cheesecloth to be nice and burning underneath. So it usually takes about 45 to 90 seconds, depending how tight it's wrapped, depending how much kerosene you put on it, etc., etc. So you put that on there. Take another one. And last, so now we've got eight wicks, four on the inside, four on the outside. This goes right over where the other one was. So put that there. And we'll put this one here. And let's go a little bit forward. There we go. And I do this one. And this one isn't going to reach around again. So you twist a couple times. Take your handy dandy scissors, cut off the excess. fold that back. That's good. Now, it's not done yet because I have found that there is another key ingredient. When this arrow flies, what's going to happen is this part here is going to slide down the shaft. It's going to fire and it'll go wee, fly down like this, and then this happens. This bad. Now you have your flaming part next to the part that makes the arrow fly. This is bad. <laughs> so you want to prevent that. So, how to prevent that is to take this handy dandy little twist tie, your third one that you have left over, roll this up, and you put this at the back of the arrow. Now the reason this is a twist tie, once tried it with duct tape, ran out of twist ties, duct tape is useful for everything, not so useful for this. What happens is when you duct tape the back of this, this part stays right where it is. When you fire it, it hits something, and the duct tape is strong enough that it doesn't allow this to slide down the shaft a little bit uh, from what it hit. And you want that to happen because although this is all nice and flaming, when it hits something, you want this not to actually enter what you're shooting at. Because I have fired these into gasoline-soaked hay bales and nothing happens. They go out because there's not enough oxygen for this fire to light the gasoline, even though it's soaked in the hay, on fire. It needs to stay outside of it. Also fun for, uh, you can take powdered sugar and a little ketchup bottle 
and powdered sugar you wouldn't think would be very flammable, but it is, and squirt it out into a, uh, a little butane torch. You can do it with a match, but the butane torch works great for a propane torch, and you get these huge fireballs. Also works with flour. Anyway, the, uh, the fire needs oxygen, so the, it doesn't get enough. <laughs> so what you're going to do is take this, and you're going to wrap this around the shaft right at the back, but you want to make sure that you don't get any cheesecloth in your twist tie here, right? You're only attaching it around the arrow. And then you'll wrap it back around the other way. Again, making sure not to get cheesecloth. And this, when it hits something, then you can put your cheesecloth back over it for a nice aesthetic effect. There we go. Uh, so now, when this hits something, it's going to hit the target, and then, let's see, it's going to hit the target, and then the arrow will go into the target like so, and this will slide down the shaft and stay outside. So it'll stay on the outside of the burning bale of the hay full of gasoline, which will then be burning, or whatever else, and that will be lovely. The flame, lots of oxygen, fuel, boom. So that is the reason for it being like so. Any questions from the peanut gallery? Here you go, one mm -hmm. flaming arrow. Please don't bring this on an airplane. They would get quite upset with you. But other than that, mm -hmm. have fun. Don't start World War III. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.